Sony's controversial PlayStation Network requirement for its PC games is once again in the spotlight after the company delisted the original Horizon Zero Dawn on Steam and the Epic Game Store, and added the PSN requirement to the upcoming single-player remaster. I don't know about you guys, but from where I'm sitting, it looks like gamers were 100% correct to be worried about developers coming for their offline single-player experiences. Sony artificially marked up the price of the original version of the game, so they could sell you the remaster at full price. Hello fellow travelers and welcome to the Hard Light Network. Alrighty guys, so it has happened yet again. Within a week of me posting my last video on this topic, yet another game has been delisted from online storefronts. But not only that, it actually gets much worse because the developer decided to double down on their anti-consumer practices. But before we get into it guys, if you want to support the channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on all of my regular uploads. Anyway, that's enough of the technical stuff, let's get right into the video. So for those of you who have haven't seen it yet, last week I put out a video covering a new California law that would require online storefronts to clearly explain when you're purchasing a license that the product isn't a permanent transaction and the license can be revoked at any time by the issuer. A law that will fundamentally change the way consumers buy all digital products and one that is not limited just to video games. And in that same video, I made a little bit of a prediction about how developers could abuse that power to the detriment of their consumer base. Feel free to call me overly suspicious, but I genuinely don't trust that other games won't start disappearing from people's libraries after this. While the language in these laws might imply that these laws are limited in scope to live service games overall, there's no guarantee that this won't affect consumer protections for other games down the road. Just imagine a scenario where Bethesda removes six digital copies of Skyrim from your library just in time for the release of their Mega Ultra Booty Edition of Skyrim 2. And of course, I wouldn't have to wait very long to be vindicated on this take because only a few days later, Sony did exactly that by delisting the original version of Horizon Zero Dawn in favor of putting up its remaster at full price. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this. Who did what? All these problems, the Middle East, the end of the world. Nostradamus. But the delisting and the remaster bait and switch aren't even the half of it. <laughs> Not at all, because Sony has decided that you haven't been punished enough yet. As this article from IGN states, Sony's controversial PlayStation Network requirement for its PC games is once again in the spotlight after the company delisted the original Horizon Zero Dawn on Steam and the Epic Game Store, and added the PSN requirement to the upcoming single-player remaster. I don't know about you guys, but from where I'm sitting, it looks like gamers were 100% correct to be worried about developers coming for their offline single-player experiences. So many people in the comments of my last video were saying that the title was clickbait, that they weren't coming after our games like this, and here we go. Not even two days later and Sony proves all of the skeptics correct. These developers don't care about their customer base, they only care about what's in our pants, specifically in our wallets. Anyway, back to the article. Sony's PSN account requirement for its PC games was thrust into the limelight with the release of Arrowhead's explosive PC and PS5 co-op shooter Helldivers 2 earlier this year. Helldivers 2 suffered a review bomb campaign on Steam after Sony made PSN accounts mandatory for PC gamers on Valve's platform. Arrowhead subsequently decided to turn the Steam user review history graph into a cape which is ready for launch but has yet to release. Sony eventually backed down and reversed the Helldivers 2 PSN account requirement but the game remains unavailable to buy in many countries that lack PSN. And indeed, all Sony's games on PC, even purely single-player ones, now suffer from this problem, which means the recently released God of War Ragnarok and now Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered are unavailable on Steam in over 100 countries. And this would be an insane move for any type of content creator, let alone a massive game development company. I could never imagine being in a situation where it would be advantageous for me to remove 100 different countries from my potential viewer base. It really makes you stop to think 
seeing just how valuable our personal data is when companies are willing to go to these links just to get it. We'll talk more about these third-party launchers and EULAs later on in the video, but for now, let's get back to the article. This week, fans noticed the original Horizon Zero Dawn, previously available to buy in all countries where Steam is accessible, was delisted from the Epic Games Store and then from Steam itself. The Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition Steam page remains live, but the game itself is unavailable for purchase. In its place is the option to pre-purchase Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered or buy its sequel, Forbidden West. The Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered Steam page signals the PSN account requirement in the small print of the game's features. Again, the original game did not have this requirement on PC. Already, negative user reviews are mentioning Sony's actions here. Quote, Delisted the original game just to add the remaster with the PSN account forced into the game, reads one Steam review for the complete edition of Zero Dawn. Now countries unsupported by PSN can't buy this game anymore, whether it's the non-remastered version, which doesn't require PSN, or the remastered version. The original version of the game proves that the PSN requirement is an unnecessary addition. And like I mentioned earlier, fans of the series who might live in countries where PSN is unavailable are now being actively punished. It seems likely, then, that Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered will suffer from review bombing when it goes on sale on Steam on October 31st. It seems unlikely that Sony will reverse course here, having suffered backlash from PC gamers to pretty much all of its Steam releases since Helldivers 2 went on sale. It has so far failed to comment on its PC PSN policy, although during the Helldivers 2 backlash it offered a reasoning that was widely ridiculed by Steam gamers. Quote, We're still learning what is best for PC players, and your feedback has been invaluable, Sony said at the time. Unlike The Helldivers 2, Horizon Zero Dawn is a purely single-player only game. It's worth noting that Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition is still available on good old games. There, it's DRM-free with no activation or online connection required to play. And there you guys have it. While Sony is giving us the Dr. Disrespect treatment with its PR public response, GOG is coming in clutch looking out for the interests of gamers everywhere. And you'd think all the psychological warfare from these gaming companies would be enough without all these absolute total freaking goober heads online defending these practices. Like Reddit user Kuroshi Masu here who says, I'm not really sure what the point of your post is. It's not a big thing to quickly make an account for let's say Warframe or other games in response to having to create a third party account to play a game on Steam. But that's the thing, it's not simply a matter of being inconvenient. The problem is, as outlined earlier in the video, is that in countries where they don't have access to these third-party sites, gamers are completely cut off from these games. But it's even worse than that, because it would be one thing if you couldn't play a game you never had access to in the first place, but fans of the original Horizon Zero Dawn never had the requirement to sign up for PSN to begin with. And now that Sony has retroactively added this requirement, these fans are no longer able to play any games in the series. But you know what? I'm a charitable guy. I can forgive Roshi's comment. It was made seven years ago, and back Back then, things weren't as bad as they are now. But this guy? This freaking nerd right here? I've got beef with this guy. Crunchy Frog says, though I would add if one extra login is putting you off playing, that's very much a you problem. That's just plain ridiculous. Your loss. So not only did this guy miss the point entirely, he's kind of being a snarky douche about it. And it's not just the issue of accessibility that we have to think about. Because while it does suck to be arbitrarily cut off from playing a series that you enjoy, you're not exactly entitled to these games. No, there's actually a much stronger point to be made. And that's about security. It shouldn't be a rather radical or controversial sentiment to point out that with every account that you create, you're opening yourself up to a greater degree of risk in terms of being hacked. You don't exactly have to look hard to find multiple examples of these companies' data security being breached. When you consider that plus the fact that these companies are definitely turning around and selling your personal data to data brokers just to make an extra buck, I think it's safe to say that it's a lot deeper than just being too inconvenient to create another account. So now that we've talked about the delisting and the problems surrounding the implementation of third-party applications, I want to finish this video off by talking about the game itself. Because I'm certain there have already been a few of you who have left a comment to the effect of Um, Sapphire, this is clickbait because you can still buy the game, you just have to pre-order the bundle. And all I have to say to that is, yeah, you're right. But if you weren't too busy shilling for the man, you would realize that there's shady stuff going on there too. And I know that you've already clicked off this video by now, so these points are for the based hardcore scribers in the audience. 
While it is true that you can still purchase digital copies of this game, it's not exactly as consumer friendly as it sounds on the surface. As you can read in this article from The Gamer, quote, Epic's delisting follows on from PlayStation quietly doubling the price of Zero Dawn's complete edition. Prior to the remaster's reveal, you could buy Zero Dawn on the PlayStation Store for $19.99. That posed a problem for PlayStation, as if it left the price that way, it would have provided the opportunity to buy the game for $19.99 and upgrade it to the PS4. 5 version for $9.99. Since standalone copies of the remaster are $49.99, that would have meant a potential savings of $20. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, just goes to show you just how greedy these companies are. And if you guys still aren't picking up what I'm putting down here, let me illustrate it to you just a little bit differently. If you previously owned a copy of Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition, the cost to upgrade to the PS5 version would be $10. And that's the same regardless of if you bought it two months months ago when the price was $20 or if you buy it now where the price is now $40, which realistically means that the added value of the remastered edition is only $10. And we know that's the case because if you happen to acquire this game through PlayStation's Play at Home initiative, you would have received it for free and the upgrade still only cost $10. And that means Sony artificially marked up the price of the original version of the game so they could sell you the remaster at full price. But that's not all my dear viewer, because if you purchased this game at launch, then you would have spent $50, which brings the total price of the upgraded version to $60. So like I said before, if you've been an actual fan of this series since the start, Sony is punishing you. Sony has created a real Goldilocks situation by punishing people who came early to the party as well as those who arrived late. And look, if my YouTube viewer base metrics are to be believed, 100% of you guys are adults and you can spend your money however you like. My only question is, is it worth it? What exactly is your $10 getting you at the end of the day? Well, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to tell you guys that this quote unquote remaster is essentially just a glorified texture pack. And while they've also added some DualSense controller support, the most substantial addition is over 10 hours of new motion capture cutscenes. And if you don't believe me, this is what the studio's art director Jan Bart Van Asterbeek had to say. Quote, We brought over Alloy's model from Forbidden West. We also reworked the character lighting to match the look of HFW and improved skin tones. Hair shaders are also improved. The slight blurring you see between PS4 and PS5 is because the PS4 image here has motion blur turned off. And hey, as you can see here, they've clearly de-uglied her, which is always a good thing. At the end of the day, I think this is just another example of the anti-consumer basilisk rearing its ugly head. And while it feels good to be vindicated in my prediction that companies would eventually start abusing this process to sell remasters, I think it's unfortunate to say that this is most likely not the last time we'll see something like this happen. Sony has shown time and time again that there is no financial incentive for these companies to cater to their audience. On the contrary, they seem more interested in pushing an online-only single-player experience through the implementation of mandatory third-party applications and sell their customers $10 texture packs, part of the assets for which were literally ripped from another game. But as shady and underhanded as those practices are, they really don't stack up to the delisting and secret price markups. In all honesty, with the current climate in the games industry, I think it's more important than ever that gamers are conscientious of the types of purchases that they're making. We need to be more cautious about handing over our data to these companies who have such a bad track record of handling its security. But most importantly, we need to stop encouraging the bad behavior of these companies by continuing to patronize them despite the abuse that they carry out against their consumer base. If a company feels the need to trick you into paying full price for a $10 upgrade, it's probably time that we stop paying for their games regardless of what they are. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, you guys are awesome. I know a large portion of my audience is dissatisfied with the current trend in the gaming industry. And honestly, I think it's just gross how Sony is trying to convert their entire model to these single player online only games. And of course, it's not just titles like Horizon, there's other titles like God of War that I'm really disappointed about because I've been a fan of that series since the first game. I'm just tired of this one-sided toxic industry relationship where the fans care more about their product than the developers do. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. And until next time, love you guys. Safe travels.